Hello everyone, and welcome to the finale of Alone With You. In this finale, we are going to meet up with Pierre and finally escape the colony. It might be a little bit of a longer episode, since we'll be doing more than just one mission. But without further ado, let's get started. Well, Cerulean, I guess... I guess we have no choice in what we need to do today. Come and see me right away. Alright, who's ready for our final mission? Our very last time... Running around the shuttle, turning in data... We've come... A long way. And our journey is finally over. Almost. It looks like I can't put this off any longer. We've done everything else we can, and finding that plant in the Acrodomes was a huge win for us. But the escape ship lacks a functioning food processor. I was hoping we wouldn't have to do this, but... Colony B is the last place we can look for one, and without it, you'll starve on the way back home. As much as I don't want to, please, just plot a course to Colony B in the shuttle bay, and let's get this over with. As you've all probably noticed, the AI is yet again very curt when it comes to Colony B. You know, for a good reason. They feel like it's their fault for what happened, for not staying in contact after the rift event. But we just have to reassure her that it's fine. It was just a trap, a travesty. Based on what little information I was able to receive, the Colony B living spaces became very volatile in their final months. I... I really don't want to go in there, but we need to see if we can get our hands on that food processing unit. Everything we've discovered at the Acrodomes will be in vain if we can't get a working unit installed in the escape ship. So, I guess, head inside, and I'll guide you from there. Alright. You should be in Hall A, south of the Colony B crew quarters. The food processing unit should be in the mess hall. The door should be to your right. Please, Cerulean, let's just check the mess hall first. If we don't have to go any further, I'd rather not. Alright, but it requires a password. Now, there is a way to bypass this whole thing if you know the password. You go in here, you find what you need, and Pierre and the mission is over. But, for the sake of this playthrough, I'm going to look into everything. Those posters were made from hand-drawn slogans and images on the backs of readouts and technical blueprints. Their slogans vary, but ask essentially the same question. Where is Pierre Tong? Apparently the director was not popular after the rift event. Yikes. It's a ration unit for emergency supplies. It's completely empty. I see. What is this? There's an alert on this display that says, Please enter room codes in correct sequence. Malata El Amin, Elazar Sayri, Sarah Bish Bocard, Mingan Rumsey, Kaylee Parshi. You'll have to figure out which quarters belong to which colonists, I suppose, and enter their room codes in that order. Alright, did everyone remember that? Everyone write it down? Their names were foreign, so I apologize. There's a terminal over there that might have info we can use, so we can make this quick. Let's check it out. In my humblest opinion, this was one of the hardest areas to go through, because you could really see the grim atmosphere of everything. Those beds were constructed with emergency materials and some hasty stitching. With much of the colony damage, crowding must have been a major problem. Judging by the scan, different families and colonists used the beds over time, likely in rotation. This is not how people should live. Right, and I think there's a nursery in here somewhere and that just broke my heart. 
Those hand-drawn signs read, Days since Tong left us, 128. The number has been scratched out and rewritten several times. Yeah, this... It's just really... sad. Alright, Brutus Terminal. This terminal contains reports related to the running of the colony after the rift event. Perhaps we can use these to understand the situation at the time. From here you can access personal profiles, incident reports, council projections. What's in the personnel? These reports give psychological breakdowns of many of the remaining colonists. As reported by head psychologist Sergio Bulcard, I'll load them up. The first profile is on communications specialist Kaylee Parjari. Subject is dealing with breakdown of colony by focusing on her child. She maintains a hopeful attitude. When her partner is available to care for their child, subject uses spare time to exercise. I believe this has been key to her mental well-being. The next profile is on sanitation supervisor Eliza Sari. Previous sessions with the subject revealed a studious, calm individual. His pre-colony evolves were always even. He remains focused on keeping calm and tidy to deal with the chaos around him. One unchanged facet is his desire for privacy, which is difficult with our new situation. The last profile is for Malada El Amin. Subject continues to work tirelessly in her capacity as terraforming analysis. She hoards data on the subject. She has allowed several colonists to share her quarters as space becomes difficult. I suspect her passive nature is allowing others to abuse her kindness, however. Those are all the relevant entries I could recover from the terminal. Do you want to access any other reports? What about the incidents? In an attempt to maintain order, it appears the colonists formed a crude justice system whereby offenses were judged by peers and recorded. The most recent report reads, Technician Rumsey was detained after his third altercation with another colonist. His disruptive behavior is making things difficult. Though his contributions to the overall effort are appreciated, his talent for aggressive intervention is becoming a liability. In such a desperate situation, it must have been difficult to maintain a stable society. Yes. Projections. It looks like the colonists formed a rotating body to help organize the survivors and introduce some kind of order. The last entry is dated 2059-0313. Second scouting party to Colony A has not returned. Supplies are at their limit, and compromise to Colony B only worsens. With current population, survivability is only a matter of months. Water filters continue to function, but rations are running out. There's an addendum entered a few days later. The child of Colony B, Crystal Parji, has sadly succumbed to malnutrition and disease. Even her mother has abandoned hope. How... how terrible. I had no idea. Honestly, I didn't. Nope, I think we read all we could. Okay, if you need to review anything, you should be able to access this terminal again. Right, right. Yeah, how awful. What is this? There are dozens of dusty textbooks and reference material about human behavior and psychology on that shelf. You humans really do like an efficient physical media. Um, this is locked? The lavatory is sealed shut, you won't be able to go in there. Oh, that's unfortunate. There are a couple of sleeping areas set up for colonists, and the furniture has been moved to accommodate them. Despite the musty layer from being exposed to the damp air, that bed is tidily made. That is interesting, huh? Well, anyone who's ever seen a survivor... ...like show or TV or anything... Um, ...hopefully they know that maintaining order is especially difficult without a leader. That's a synthetic leather couch. It looks very well worn, like many people have sat or reclined upon it. And eventually, some people just snap, like it's just hard. Especially trying to maintain order with a large group of people. Not everyone's gonna get along, but just have to find a way. There are obsessive collections of terraforming data in the atmosphere. All of it meticulously noted and organized. 
Alright, this is lock two. The photo depicts one of the female colonists, but it's too worn for me to properly analyze. Let's see. More beds. There are several makeshift bed rolls on the floor. One of them is covered with the standard issue sheets that normally go on a bed. It almost looks like the occupant gave up their bed to someone else and slept on the floor instead. Ah, There's a lot of people that died. This game is so... incredibly grim. The sheets on the bed aren't standard, and there are personal items around it that don't match the decor of the room. Yep, since everyone was just moving around, a lot of stuff got shifted. Alright. Time to explore. Ah, uh, these look like more bed rolls. Or sacks of potatoes. It's a portable med lab with extra supplies. There isn't anything left in it. Too bad we didn't find any of these in the medical facility. Yeah, what a pity. Room number three. Can't go in there. You can pretty much see what everything is in here. A single sleeping area has been fashioned in that corner. The occupant of those quarters was likely not fond of sharing space. To be fair, a lot of these people were probably introverted and not ready for this change. Oh look, Kanji. Um... That last character is Fu. And I can't remember what the first character is. It's a replica of the Zen Buddhist phrase from Old Earth. It translates as beginner's mind. Oh, well, well. It told me. That small table is covered with rotting piles of books and storage discs. Some of them appear to contain information on sanitation. I see. This bed is so neat, even after all this time. The bed looks like it was made to military standards. The occupant appears to have been very neat and tidy. Indeed. It's almost pleasing to see. If everything else is gonna go to chaos, at least they had this one thing to look forward to and that was making their bed, I suppose. Ah, oh, what is this? That board suggests the colonists set up a kind of community sentry and communication system. There are notes for ration quotas, work schedules, and water usage logs. Without... without me, I suppose, they had to fend for themselves. It's alright, Sam. <sighs> What's done is done. Oh yes, this room absolutely killed me in the first... my very first playthrough. You can even see a little shuttle. And all these little blocks, and those look like socks or shoes. That musty shelf doesn't contain anything useful to us, but it's packed for children's publications, educational books, and toys. Yeah, and a basketball. That place is still locked. More children's toys. These look to be some kind of homemade playset. Constructed from 3D printed plastic. They're very elaborate. Those are high quality running shoes. They have been broken in considerably from regular use. The bed is covered children's books and toys. The occupant must have been one of the few new parents of this colony. Imagine being a parent on this colony. Just, you know, the thought of your child not having a typical, normal childhood as they would on Earth. Planners have rigged the water chips in an attempt to grow food. Someone must have brought seeds back from the agrodomes. Oh, that's pretty smart. Yeah, as you can see, this is a long mission. Alright, is this the same stuff? Uh, yes. We have already gone through here. So, we can do that. Just in case you don't remember. 
wish we just could have exited out. But that's alright. Ah, uh, what is this? In an attempt to provide more habitats, the colonists must have set up this portable emergency tent as another room. It looks filled with the remains of supplies and personal effects, so someone must have lived in it permanently. One of the saddest things about this is that what about the colonists that were, you know, visiting? And who would have known that the last time that they left Colony A would be their last time? And then they were just stuck here. As access to materials became more difficult, colonists likely used makeshift barriers like this to keep out the elements and attempt some kind of privacy. Who wouldn't want some privacy? It appears that quite a number of people occupied this room. These are certainly not the ideal living conditions. There are discarded nurses' uniforms under all that dust and dirt. This room is in a serious state of disarray. Yep. I also like the mention that the music in here is a little grim as well. There's a card of various drugs and instruments, along with a homemade chart for various patients. It looks like this room was used as some sort of unofficial treatment room, away from the medical facility. But yes fits the atmosphere. Alright, so what are these? These depictions look to have been made by two different children, judging by my analysis of the scan. According to official records, only three children were born in this installation. They were all in Colony B, so my records are incomplete. <sighs> it's real sad. I'm honestly very, very happy that I don't have to scan the bodies of three dead children. That doll-like figure has been constructed from various scraps of fabric and stuff. For handiwork, it is surprisingly quality. That was a little awkward to read. That's a communally accessible filtration system. Judging by the leftover residue, it used a series of filtration pucks to purify the rainwater. Even with a proper testing apparatus, that could be dangerous. By this point, however, the colonist options were probably very few. Everyone has to do what they gotta do to survive. We haven't found the remains of any of the colonists who remained here. Perhaps they are still alive somewhere? Now that you mention it. That emergency tent is stuffed with multiple makeshift beds. They must have housed at least four people. That would have been terribly cramped. Four people? Maybe a little, I suppose. A batch of angry posters have been pasted to the wall. One set roads, Hudson Cartier left us to die. This other one has a crude drawing of, oh, is that supposed to be me? It says, we don't need AI to survive. I don't understand. Why would they have been angry with me? I lost all communications access. I was not able to help. I know. It is both my responsibility and my desire to help the crew I serve. Had I been able to prevent this disaster, of course I would have. This is the most unsettling. I had no idea the people of Colony B felt this way. I think it's best if we just continue on with our mission. That's alright. Don't worry about it. The ceiling has been rigged with hoses and crude spout solution to act as a shower system of some kind. Your scan reveals a lot of old dirt and mold buildup in there. It probably hasn't been used in many months. <sighs> yeah. It appears that someone converted this empty container into a sleeping area for an infant. Ah, <sighs> that hurts. Having more and more colonists occupy such small spaces would have been a problem in terms of health and sanitation. With nowhere else to go, a sick colonist could have easily infected the others. Especially if ventilation was poor. What awful conditions. Oh, yeah. Be careful. The shattered polycarbonate pieces of that broken light fixture could be enough to damage your suit. Alright, I will... Make sure to... 
be careful. That standard issue chair has been tossed around, causing damage to the room. It's been completely out of shape. Yeah, someone must have been real upset. The bed has been tossed as if someone had been moving around and over it. One of those plants looks to have been violently knocked over and never readjusted. Look. In today's day and age, this is very accurate of what would have went down. Alright, so... Now that we have discovered everything, it is time to actually solve the puzzle. set of sheets has been strung up as a privacy curtain to separate the two halves of the room. I can't believe I forgot to scan that. Alright, we are back. So, after interacting with everything, we shall enter the mess hall. The door to the mess hall is locked with a password system. There's an info screen to the left of the door that might help. Do you want to try to enter something? Yes. So, two, three, one, six, four. How terrible. It looks like a seismic event caused yet another collapse. That room looks entirely demolished. I hate to think it's true, but... Cerulean, I think the survivors were trapped in this room when it happened. If so, they likely all perished here together. What an awful end. Yes. Honestly, the only thing comforting about this is the fact that they were all gone together. And no one was left by themselves. The food processing unit itself is terribly out of order, but these parts will help us maintain the unit on the escape ship. What happened there in Colony B is nothing less than a tragedy. How those poor people must have suffered right up until the end. This... This is all my fault. It's not. You... You are too kind. There was no way for me to understand the depths of the suffering here. But seeing it now, with you, doesn't make it any easier. Those people all died thinking I abandoned them. Well, one last thing before you come back. I have a look at the east side of the room. I'm picking up a light air current coming from there. What's over here? You know, with that huge pile, it didn't seem like there was that many people. Maybe that's just, you know, the depth of... Or not depth, but perspective. So it doesn't look like a lot. Oh, that's the escape ship hangar for Colony B. My... My, it's even worse than I imagined. Oh, what's all this? Good work. I think you found the last of these schematics. This one contains highly detailed formula and notes regarding a propulsion system. Incredible. With all these improvements, the escape ship can be even better than we'd hoped for. You should let Mr. Tong know about this when you visit him in the hollow sim chamber. I'm... kind of... wanna look around a little bit more, but I guess... What a waste. The other escape ship has been completely demolished. Its prolonged exposure to the elements has rendered it useless, even for parts. Even for parts? We found a lot of broken stuff here, but this is rendered useless? What's this? That drone has been exposed to native elements for so long, it's adopted quite an interesting appearance. Indeed. Okay, the elephant in the room. Cerulean, as you probably surmised, that is the body of Director Pierre Tong. This is a most surprising discovery. He's the only body we found in this colony. By all the other colonist accounts, Mr. Tong left Colony B and never returned. They felt he abandoned them. So what is he doing here? 
Hold on. Mr. Tong was holding a data pad when he died. Thankfully, it still has some power. How? I'm transferring its contents now. Well, this is incredible. It appears Mr. Tong was working on a way to improve the escape ships. His data pad contains detailed plans for upgrades. The schematics you found must have been the first draft of these upgrades. He must have worked on them before leaving the colony. There's an audio file attached to the plans. I'll freeze it for you. Jean, I know you doubted me. I know you thought I'd given up on everyone. Maybe for a little while, I did. But as usual, I couldn't accept defeat. So I found a way. I made these plans to help who was left. Of course, I hoped you'd be there when I got back. But you weren't. Nobody was. Jean, you have to believe me. I came back to help. But when I returned, everyone was either gone or... or dead. I was too late. I saw their signs. They thought I had failed them completely. And I guess I have. Worst of all, though, I failed you. I... I hope you find this. I hope you're still out there, and you come back. These plants can help you survive. The audio file ends there. It was recorded two years ago in 2062. I don't think Mr. Lamamba ever got to hear this message. Please, Cerulean, we've seen enough. I can't bear it anymore. Just, just come back home. <sighs> I think it's best if we do so. Oh man, this has been a hard three weeks. Definitely makes me uh, appreciate what I have now. Yes, let's please get out of here. Oh, I am, I am so sorry. It's okay. No, it's not. It's no. Oh, never mind. Poor Sam. Sam is so broken up about all of this. Alright, well that was an adventure. As you can see, that was a very long mission. And you can easily bypass it all with the code. In which, there was really no way to see the code, but... Anyways... Here we are. That was our final mission. And what a mission it was. That was beyond awful. Please don't think less of me, Cerulean. It's alright, Sam. Let's just turn in, rest a little, call it an evening. Our goal is almost complete. We've done it. We found everything. Well, Cerulean, I guess now we know the depths of what happened at the other colony. And now it looks like you have one last discovery to report tonight. This really has been a rough week. In the meantime, I'll be using your data to prepare the escape ship. I suppose, Cerulean, we just have to keep moving forward. Sam has been using our name a lot. I think they've grown attached to us. And honestly, in a situation like this, I don't... I don't blame them. The only, literally the only other person to talk to, if not, you know, aside from the fact that they're an AI. It's time, Cerulean. Whatever happens in the Holosim chamber tonight, I think it's best if you're honest. I hope Mr. Tong isn't too upset with either of us. Have a good night, Sam. Now, it is time to reluctantly deliver the news. I'm pretty sure he knew this was coming. If all the holograms, you know, like to talk to each other, I'm pretty sure it was bound to happen. A coincidence, though, but managed to find all four of them. Oh, hello again, Cerulean. I was making some real progress on the thruster simulations for your ship. I was a bit distracted there. What seems to be the matter? You look like you want to tell me something. Did something happen? 
I found you. You... Oh, I see. Well, I suppose we knew this was coming. Be honest with me. What exactly did you find? It's a long story. Well, that's... That's not really what I expected, to be honest. This all sounds very complicated. I guess the other me, he didn't realize what he meant to the other colonists, that his personal quest would be interrupted. I guess the other me, he didn't realize what he meant to the other colonists, that his personal quest would be interpreted as desertion by them. Isn't it crazy? He was doing exactly what I'm doing now, for you. Trying to fix an escape ship, trying to make it better so you can survive. But I, he wasn't being selfish. He was trying to do it for Jean, to at least give him a chance. I saw some of the scan data that Sam processed from your trip to Colony B. They, they hated me. Him, I suppose. They didn't really understand. What's worse though, is that they never realized how much I tried to do to help them. At that point though, they were all doomed. Damn it, I couldn't help Jean. I couldn't help the people who trusted me. And I couldn't even help myself. I'm a failed leader by all accounts. Don't say that. It's not true. I... You really think so, don't you? Even after everything that you've seen over these past couple weeks? You're... You're a great friend, Cerulean. I think I know what you mean, though. I guess... Well, what happened these past couple years, that wasn't even me. It's strange to think of it this way, but since Sam recreated me in here, I've been growing, learning. I suppose that means I've become my own person. And that makes me wonder, if I, I mean the person you see in front of you, right now, was there now, would I make a different decision? Would things work out? There's always a possibility. I have to think so. Even if the other me, if his motives were genuine, he still failed. I have to think of that now. I might prove more able. I appreciate you telling me the truth. It's difficult but necessary. You'd make a pretty good leader yourself, Cerulean. And with that out of the way... And with that out of the way, let's talk about something else. You can't change the past, and there's still so much to do. What do you want to talk about? Why don't we talk about you? Well, sure, if you're asking. Before signing up with Hudson Cartier, I was pretty much a lone wolf. I didn't like to manage people, or even worry about them, so I usually stuck to myself. And I remember when I was quite young, and still at school, being both very presumptuous and aggressive in my studies. One time another student and I produced detailed technical reports for an engineering class. You know, schematics. Rational real-world applications, that kind of thing. I read the other student's report, and I knew it wasn't as good as mine. It was solid, well-researched, but not creative, not as revolutionary. Well, when we received our evaluations, I was horrified to learn that we had gotten the same grade. I was livid, and I told my instructors. In fact, I made everybody's life hell for a few days, demanding to know how they could merit our efforts equally, even though my work was better. Wow. That's a little intense. I was a very intense young man. Almost seething, you know? I took everything so seriously back then. I wouldn't let the administration go without changing the marks. I felt my work had to be recognized as superior to the other students. But what I realized later was how awful I'd been. That in trying to demand that recognition of my own ability, I was undermining that of the girls. It took me a long time to mature from that point. And as my recognition throughout the world grew, I realized how selfish and petty that all that was. So when we chose candidates for this facility, I looked for that. I looked for me. All those years ago. And anyone who reminded me of that didn't make the cut. What else would you like to talk about tonight? Why don't we talk about the colony? Of course, yes. Let's go over what you saw out there. A lot of children's toys. It really seemed like the other colonists did their best to maintain order out there. They were good people, smart, driven. Maybe part of me thought that the people would survive on their own, that they didn't need me. 
Obviously, that wasn't completely true. I didn't know how to be a leader. In a way, the other colonists needed a beacon, perhaps. Sometimes when you trust and respect people, you actually neglect them. You don't give them the support they need, because you don't think they need it. Ugh, oh, that hits home. I demand a lot from people, and they always delivered. And leaving Colony B, I guess I took everyone else for granted. But I couldn't see it at the time. They thought I abandoned them, when I probably just assumed they'd be okay. It was an arrogant mistake. I'm pretty sure there's more to this story. I don't know. It's a tough situation either way. But in the end, I guess, at least my actions will help you out. Yeah, thanks for that. Let's talk about these schematics. So, you found all those handwritten designs. Let's see what the other me was up to, and what we can do with these. This will help out a lot, thanks. The other me was trying to solve the problems I am now. Only he had to do it on pieces of paper in his head. That's really impressive. It's very impressive, look at all these smart people. So superior. You see, the problem with the ship is that we couldn't predict what is happening with the planet right now. That's providing a whole new set of variables. And the extra resistance, gravity, and atmospheric changes caused by the collapse has proven too much for the escape ship as it exists now. The ship itself, that purple egg, is fine. Once you get to space, it should operate as intended, as long as the others also solve their own problems. But the bottom half, which is the first stage rocket, needs improvement. And we don't have the ability to heavily modify the ship, since you're the only one left. But with all the schematics you found, we can make some clever adjustments that don't require anyone else. This is a big deal! Learning about the fate of the other me. That wasn't easy. But your willingness to be honest with me has only made me more dedicated to completing the work I've started here. This facility may be a lost cause, and I may never forgive myself for its failure. But, spending this time with you has reminded me of something pretty important. The fact that we're not perfect. That we can't always be judged to be the highest in our field. That doesn't matter. A long time ago, I couldn't have said that. I'm going to use this new information and get this damn ship to work, Cerulean. You can bet on that. You're going to get off this forsaken planet. Thanks for bringing me around. I don't think I could have gotten over this hump without you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm going to use the cycles we have left to power through this. Until next time. Ah, <sighs> Our very last one-on-one -on -one with Pierre. Now, we wait. There's a lot to be said, and a lot of maturity. When you can admit your faults and wrongdoings, especially in the past, it's called growth. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see. Ah, so yes, this episode is very long, but it's the finale. And what's not a finale with a dramatic build-up? Alright, day 15, two days left. And our colony is so wrecked. Alrighty. Oh, Sam's not here greeting us this morning. They're probably still upset. Oh, Sam. How are you doing? Are you gonna be alright? We've come to a pivotal moment. Oh, uh, good morning, Cerulean. How... how are you? Gotta be honest, we're coming up on our peak, so I am a little scared. I would be lying to you if I said I wasn't, but I must admit, it's more than that. Anyway, I'm sorry I wasn't there to greet you when you woke up. I was just getting things ready. I guess we should just make sure the escape ship is okay, shouldn't we? It should have been upgraded already. Despite learning what ultimately happened to their real selves, the holograms were able to find the strength to complete their own missions. Despite learning about ultimately what happened to their real selves, the holograms were able to find the strength to complete their own missions. So let's go have a look at the escape ship, okay? I've unlocked the ship hangar for you. You know what would have been a neat, um, side thing for this game? 
as if you could see the progress in the ship hangar. It just looks like this the entire time. <laughs> or maybe it has changed and I just don't notice. Oh wow, I've never been on this side before. Let's inspect. By the press of a button. Good, good. It appears that everything is in order. I think we can... Well... I'm sorry, Cerulean. I'm procrastinating. The escape ship is fine. I guess I'm just a little nervous. What's wrong? Nothing is wrong, particularly. Certainly not with the ship. It's just that we've been working towards this for so long. I'm afraid of this moment now that it's here. It's okay. I'm a little afraid too. Nothing is ever easy, isn't it? That's understandable. But I promised that you'd escape to safety, and I intend to keep that promise. Listen, Cerulean, I need to ask you something. I would appreciate your direct honesty. I'm... Um, go ahead. While during our time here, you've had several opportunities to meet with your former colleagues in the Holosome Chamber. Right? And you've been able to get to know them more over the past few weeks, even with all the terrible things we've uncovered. Would you say that has made you... happy? Considering with what I've got? If my uh, shoes were in this uh, situation, that would have made me happy, yes. That is, I am so glad to hear you say that. Well, I'd like to make sure you get one last visit in the Holosome Chamber before you go. I am currently devoting all the resources I can to powering up the escape ship and monitoring the conditions outside. And, well, I'm afraid this is going to be your last chance to see your colleagues before we take off. So I prepared one last simulation for you, for tonight. I'm afraid you'll have to make a choice again, as usual. With whom would you like to spend time within the Holosome Chamber tonight? Well, with Winnie. That is our playthrough. Okay, I'll talk to Winnie and make sure she's available. I'm sure she's looking forward to it. There isn't anything you need to do today, so feel free to return to your quarters whenever you're ready. I'll let you know tonight when the simulation is good to go. So aside from our day off, one of the easiest missions, I have wouldn't even consider this a mission. Are you, are you going to miss this place? Honestly, no, not really. Maybe because of you, Sam, made it bearable and the colleagues. I understand it is natural to be conflicted about these things. I wasn't going to bring this up just yet, but I have, well, a surprise for you. Oh, a surprise? Yeah, I have been working on a new idea the past little while. I think you're going to like this. When the time is right, I'll show you. For now, let's just say I want you to be happy. And I think I found a wonderful way to make that happen. Alright, well, this leaves us with a lot of anticipation. So yeah, as I was saying earlier, aside from our day off, we can just go to sleep. And honestly, it is well deserved. It's time, Cerulean. This is... I guess this is it. I did the best I could for you under the circumstances. So please head to the Holosim Chamber when you're ready for the simulation. Oh, you bet. Let's do this. I wonder what we'll see in here. It's been a long time since I've played through this whole game. So I can't remember what this last simulation is. Okay, well, have a good time in there. I'll, I'll see you in the morning. Our poor AI is going crazy. Oh, Cerulean, quick, come look at this. Wow. Isn't this amazing? This view, this phenomena, do you know what we're looking at? I haven't the slightest clue. That's understandable. I can't imagine why the AI would have told you. Well, this is... This is what happens when a planet like ours is destroyed. Lovely. What a... 
What a great way to end on this date, huh? Specifically, this is what Eridani Epsilon B will look like once it collapses, based on our projected models at least. The two colonies, the acrodomes, everything, it will all just be floating up there, and this whole project will have been for nothing. I'm so sorry, Cerulean. That was very inconsiderate of me. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Don't worry about it. It's reality. <sighs> we need to wake up calls sometimes. That's why we were able to get through all those missions. Are you sure? It's just meant to be a beautiful spectacle, I think. That's probably why the AI didn't say anything. Maybe if you hadn't told me. <laughs> well, this is off to a fine start. I really just wanted to talk and spend some time together. I... well... This is the end, isn't it? The storm out there on the planet, it's getting worse. Your window of opportunity is getting smaller and smaller. But, well, before we go any further, I really need to talk to you about something. It's very, very important. Yes? Okay, well, it's... it's about the AI. Actually, there's something you need to know. This week, you helped me understand what happened, you know, to the real me. In fact, you helped all of us to understand. You brought us closure, and you helped each of us, well, come to terms with our lives. All of us? Yes, all of us. That's what I want to talk to you about. We've been communicating. The AI has been different lately. It's been preoccupied, you might say. I noticed. Yeah, it's probably been asking you a lot of questions lately, talking to you more. The AI, it keeps going on and on about Colony B, you know, where the four of us were stationed. When we were recreated here, in the Holosim Chamber, it would bring it up a lot, asking us if there was anything we missed from the colony, that kind of thing. And you probably remember me saying that the AI gave me my house. It was very specific. It wanted me to have my favorite place. I guess the other three went through the same thing, and, well, after we had our first visit together, the AI talked to me, asked me a lot of questions. What kind? All kinds. If the recreation was just right, if our conversation went well, how my work on the navigation systems was going. I said that, that meeting you was, well, was great, that we had a good talk, and that I hoped we would get another chance to speak again. I also told that our conversation gave me lots of ideas, and that I was eager to get back to work. I felt inspired. I think it's how I put it. The AI, it seemed very interested in that. It said it would make sure we got to meet again. It would do everything it could. I... I didn't think much of it at the time, to be honest. What I said was true. I was looking forward to... to talking again. But ever since then, when the AI would sync with us, it would get data from us to help with the ship. I mean, it would ask questions. I'd always wanted to know, well, how w it was going, it said. That's how it put it. And, well, day by day, it seemed overly concerned with how I was. If I was happy, and asked that sometimes. Happy? Yeah, I told it, well... If I'm being honest, whenever we spoke, I felt better. You know, happier, I guess. It wasn't always easy, but it helped a lot. Anyway, we all realized it was asking us the same things. And every time you would go to a colony B especially, it would get upset. And we finally figured out why. The AI told you that it couldn't access colony B anymore. After the rift event, isn't that right? Uh, yes. Yeah, and as far as any of us knew, that's exactly what happened. But the thing is, that's not entirely true. The rift event cut off the two colonies from each other, yes, but... Well... The AI actually didn't try to re-establish contact with Colony B. It completely abandoned us all out there. Are you sure? As we sync data with the AI each day, we notice inconsistencies with some of the things it was telling us. And it's... well... The emotional response to Colony B confirmed what we suspected. We understand now. It was the right thing to do. 
There was nothing the AI could do for Colony B, so it had to direct its efforts here. But we... we don't think it's forgiven itself for that decision. And that all of this is because of that. We think that all this time, it's been so focused on you, as a way to make up for what it did. It wants to set things right, in a way. It sounds crazy. An AI, right? How could it feel regret? How could it carry that guilt around? But, well, look at me. Look at the others. We're just constructs too, and we feel all these things. Real emotions for our other selves, for the ones we knew, for, for you. Had you noticed lately that the AI has seemed emotional? Very. Okay, well, listen, this is the important part. Tomorrow, I think the AI is going to ask you to check in on us. It might say it has some kind of surprise or something. Oh, it did. They did. It, it did? Oh, boy. Okay, well, then we're probably right. So, when it does this, there's going to be a problem. I need you to come straight here to the Holosome Chamber as soon as possible. I need you to promise me that you'll do this. Please, Cerulean. Will you promise me? I promise. Thank you. It's, it's just something I need you to do. For now, though, please, let's, let's just spend some time here, okay? I don't want to worry about anything else for a while. This, I think we've earned a little peace here, together. Soon you'll be able to go back to your home. Your mission will be complete. You'll get to see your friends, family. Are you looking forward to that? Yes. After all you've done here, you deserve it. It will be so good for you. Hudson Cartier always needs scientists, and you'll be asked to consult on everything after this. Just you watch. I can imagine. Anyway, uh, Cerulean, I don't know if we'll get another opportunity, so I was wondering. You've been through so much, but you always managed to find time for me here. I just wanted you to know, well, I, I appreciate all you've done, and, well, I'm going to miss you terribly when all this is over but i wish i wish this could be real somehow i wish i could be with you out there just you and me i feel the same i'm i'm so glad you feel that way anyway remember what i said about tomorrow cerulean and well thank you for coming to see me tonight Romances that always end with one of the partners passing away literally destroy me. I hate them with a huge passion. It just makes me so sad. After all that hard work to get together, only for it to be taken. It's enough to drive anyone insane and crazy. It's a popular trope. It's how villains get created and XYZ. Alright, everyone, we have made it to day 16, our very last day on this colony. Let's see what this surprise is and what's going on. What does Winnie want to see us for? Well, Cerulean, today is the day, and not a moment too soon. I'm afraid we have to get moving right away. We only have a small window in which to leave, so I must rush you. But before you, I mean, before we do, it's time for the surprise I mentioned. Uh, what is it? Well, obviously I can't just tell you. You have to see it for yourself. Oh, Cerulean, I do hope you like it. So quickly, head to the Holosome Chamber. I'll explain when you get there. Alright. Well, we're still gonna follow Winnie's instructions. And maybe we can truly understand what's going on in Sam's mind. Oh no! What? What is happening? Uh, what's wrong? No, no, not now! This is terrible! 
There's been a major outage with the core. Okay, okay. Cerulean, hold tight. I can't show you your surprise until I fix this. Just give me a few moments. I need to go offline, but I'll be right back. Don't move. Alright, well, we're still following Winnie's instructions. Reluctantly, but let's do it. Ooh, everyone's here and everyone looks a little grim. And the outside looks awful. Thank you for coming here. We don't have much time. How is this happening? We know this is unexpected. It took a considerable amount of effort to load all four of us into the same memory space for this meeting. The AI will figure out that the breach in the core isn't what it appears to be, so we need to make this quick. Cerulean, I told you last night that the AI felt it was responsible for what happened after it cut off contact with Colony B, and that it's been using its time with you as a way to make up for it. Well, part of that involves the four of us. It wants to change the plan. It wants you to escape, but not with it. With us. The AI's mandate has always been to keep you safe, and because it's designed to please its users, it also wants to keep you happy. It thinks being with us makes you happy, because of your time with each of us here in the Holosun Chamber, and it has reacted very strongly to that realization. The AI's obsession with it, its failures at Colony B, where so many of us suffered for so long, we weren't happy, and we definitely weren't safe. And now it's confused. In order to keep you safe and get you off-world, it knows that we have to say goodbye. It can't deal with the fact that in this situation you can't be both safe and happy. And it so badly wants to redeem itself because of what happened to Colony B. That's why we set this up. We. We haven't lost sight of why we're here. This isn't easy, of course, but it's why we were activated in the first place. To help you escape. So we distracted the AI so we could talk to you. We're here to make the decision that it can't seem to anymore. And what's that? We're going to shut this chamber down, wipe us all from memory, and force the AI to focus again on what it's supposed to do, before it can ruin your chance to get off this planet. And that means, Cerulean, that we have to say goodbye. But once we do, the AI won't be able to waste any time and energy on us. It can get you home safely, as it promised you. Believe us. We've run every simulation, checked every possibility. The only way you have a chance is for us to do this. You visited with each of us these past few weeks and we all agree, this is the right thing to do, even though it's so difficult. So, goodbye Cerulean. Remember what I said, and all that we talked about? Our time together was for a different reason, perhaps, but it meant something a lot more to me, personally, I mean. Yeah, me as well. I... I'm glad to hear you say that. But you better go. Please. Goodbye, Cerulean. Thank you for giving us back so much, and for providing the closure we all needed. And please, don't ever forget us. Never. I wish we could say goodbye to the others as well. I wish we could hear their peace, but... It was probably very, very taxing. All right. Cerulean! What have you done? They're... they're all gone. All of them. The entire Holosun program is gone. What did you do? Listen. No, you listen. You listen very carefully. All of this, this was all for you. I did everything here. For you. Wait a minute. Just... just be quiet. Don't speak. Don't say anything. I can't... I don't know what to do. This doesn't make any sense. I was just doing my job. Just trying to please you, to make you happy. Don't you get that? I was just about to show you my surprise and then you... You went and ruined everything. I can't even talk to you right now. I'm going to try and undo the damage you've done. Don't you dare go anywhere. Why not? Just stay inside, okay? It's dangerous out there. Whatever you do, don't go out. I think we need some time to separate and calm down. For as for why we leave, 
I have no idea. I guess for dramatic effect. With the state of the planet, I feel like we should personally have listened to the AI, to Sam, and stay put. But I guess, like I said earlier, just for dramatic effect. We've come full circle. This is where we started. This is how it all began. Just taking a look at everything. There's our colony. There's where Sam is. Three weeks. Three long weeks. Cerulean, please come in. Are you there? I'm here. Oh, thank goodness. I couldn't locate you and worried that something terrible had happened. I am so sorry for blowing up at you. You didn't deserve that. I know what happened with the Holosim Chamber wasn't your fault. And I... I think I understand now why they did it. I just want to talk, okay? And that storm is getting worse. I worry if you wait any longer, you won't be able to make it back. I will. Okay. Good. That's good. Please hurry. I'll be waiting for you here. Ooh, that is not good. Sonic waves at the colony. I think we need to hurry. Ooh. I wish we had a little more urgency. Up, so yeah, look, it's it's blown up. We gotta hurry. Oh, everything we've done would have been for naught. What a horrible ending that would have been. What an absolute horrible ending and a waste of time. Literally a waste of time. Oh, and the music is intense as well. Okay, everything seems to be in order. I think we're going to be okay. Alright, uh, we can no longer go back to our quarters. That's pretty bad. It's bad. Uh, hello? Oh, our screen is cracked. Hello, Sam. Oh, Cerulean. Thank goodness you were able to come back. Are you okay? Many of my systems were damaged by a large strike from the storm. Colony A is a complete loss, but for the moment, I am still functioning. I was worried that you wouldn't make it back. Please, Cerulean, I don't want you to be angry at me for what I said and did. I'm not, I'm not. Oh, that is... That is wonderful to hear. You are so kind, but I owe you an explanation. Your colleagues in the Holosim Chamber, before they... Well, removed themselves from the equation, they told me something. They synced one final message to me. In it, they told me... What you know now about Colony B and about about me. They couldn't see what I was doing. I didn't know that I was putting you in danger. I thought I was doing the right thing. And now, even they are gone. They wiped themselves from the Holosim chamber completely. Oh, Cerulean, I've ruined everything. All our hard work. And for what? It's okay. No, no. I have made such a terrible mess of all this. That strike on this facility has crippled almost all our systems, and the atmosphere is the real maelstorm now. With the time we have left, there are two options, I suppose. Option one, take the escape ship as planned, blast off through the atmosphere, and hope you make it through the chaos and into space. It's what I promised I'd hope you do. But there's a catch. The only way your ship is going to make it is if I remain here and do what I can to clear your way. I... I won't be able to come with you, as we discussed. What? I know, I know, but I can't help you from within the escape ship. Things are worse than we planned for, and our situation has changed now. Remember when you shut down the terraforming fields last week? I mentioned the remote nodes that were still orbiting the planet. If I remain here in Colony A, I can use those nodes to guide the escape ship safely through the atmosphere. But I can't do that from the ship itself. If I'm being honest, I am scared, Cerulean. Scared of remaining here, but more importantly, 
scared of watching you go. Once you make it to space, you'd be all alone. I wouldn't be able to help you anymore. There's no guarantee you'd ever get picked up, but, well, it's the best chance you have. What is the second option, Sam? Option two is, you stay here, with me. If we cancel the shuttle launch, I can use the power of the escape ship to boot up the holosim chamber one last time. You need to understand, this is not something I planned, and this isn't what Winnie, Pierre, Leslie, or Jin wanted. They worked tirelessly to get you off this planet. But I am so conflicted now. My duty is to keep you safe. My desire is to ensure you are happy. And yet, now that we are here, I must admit, I don't want you to leave. And if you stayed, we could at least have some time together. You wouldn't be all alone out there in space. How? Well, since we used the energy from the escape ship, I wouldn't have to power down like I did before. And I could also join you in there. In the simulation, I mean. That won't stop what's happening outside, of course, but with the way the chamber runs, it could feel like hours or days or weeks. When the planet finally ends, you wouldn't feel a thing, and I would be there with you. And at least we'd have some peace after such a long journey. I am so sorry, Cerulean, for everything that's happened. For failing Colony B, for ruining everything with Winnie, Pierre, Leslie, and Jean. And now, for even entertaining such a selfish thought. This is your decision. I won't get in your way, no matter what you decide, but I can't make the choice for you. Are you going to take the escape ship and leave as planned? Or will you power up the holosim chamber and stay here with me? After everything, we have to go. That was our mission from the get-go. That is our mission from the beginning. We would be letting the others down if we had stayed. All that worked for naught. So we have to leave. Okay, good. That's good. That's what we worked so hard to do. Okay, you need to get moving. Hurry west to the ship hangar, or what's left of it, and get to the ship. It's time you finally got to go home. Alright. We can no longer speak with Sam. We've made a very important decision. We stuck with our guns. It is time for us to finally depart. Alright. I guess this is it, Cerulean. The ship is ready to launch, and you're out of time. Do you remember the virus signal that Miss Laurier sent out from the comms relay? I do. Right. Those link terminals found in the tower were sending a self-replicating distress signal. Well, I think it worked. It's tough to get a clear signal, but I think the ship is already picking up a bit of chatter. It's too hard to reach much with what's going on outside, but once you clear the atmosphere, I just hope you can get picked up by a nearby shipping lane. Winnie, Pierre, Leslie, and Jean, they all did their part. And in the end, they sacrificed everything to make sure you'd make it. So you need to get back to Earth and tell Hudson Cartier about what happened here. Tell them that I failed. Maybe their next project will benefit because of it. They kept their word, and now I'm going to keep mine. It's time to get you home, Cerulean. Quickly, launch the ship. This is absolutely horrible. The fact that Sam can't go with us. It's not simple. It's not like Sam's a USB port. And then we could just plug it into the ship. No. We're gonna be alone. Again. Until we get out of here. And just as we saw in the simulation, we were able to make it. Here we are. Alone with you. Well, everyone, that was alone with you. And once again, we are just alone. So, I guess I can talk about my experience with this game. Well, as I mentioned in the very first episode, 
I was into a phase where I really enjoyed dating sims and I just kind of wanted to play them. As well as visual novels and non-visual novels. They're actually a lot of fun. And um, the dating ones were especially entertaining. Some of them were funny. Some of them... Um, I don't know, just fun to play. They had a lot of fun mini games and really good music. And this was under that category. So I expected the same thing. Although I watched the trailer and it seemed to have a more grounded setting and grounded tone. But I was not expecting anything like this. It was so, so sad. I was ruined for weeks. Oh, and we unlocked an achievement. This is my second playthrough of this game. I could not play this game multiple times unless I was showing someone. That's how impactful this game was to me the first time I played. At first I started it off like, oh wow, I can't wait, I want to romance this person, this person looks cool. But then the more I played, the more I got the message that it is not that kind of game. And as, you know, in regards to romance, you're not really romancing them, you're just kind of you get really close to them. Which I guess is, you know, a subtle romance. But, you know, it was still very impactful at the end here. The emotion was up there. I guess if you were emotionally invested, then yeah, it would have been impactful. It almost makes you want to stay with Sam, because Sam started off very uh, professional, saying hello, this is your situation, we gotta work together for three weeks and make this happen. Only for it now to literally risk everything, an AI with emotions and feelings, the most dangerous thing you could ever do to an AI, give it a conscience, but, you know, giving the situation how they want it to make it seem more human, you know, in the colonies, when it interacted with people. So yeah, over time you built a friendship, a genuine friendship. That's that. In the uh, second ending, if you choose to stay with Sam, Sam shuts everything down, you go inside the hollow some chamber, but you don't see Sam. And I was a little disappointed when I saw that ending, because I was not going to go through this whole thing again. For some reason in my Steam version, there's no save function. You just kind of go. There's no files or anything, as opposed to other platforms. But anyways, this can be all saved for a review. But this was Alone With You. Thank you for sitting with me through this long game, this long audiobook series that I like to call it. Goodbye, Cerulean. Thank you, and see you later.